and the song goes that uh, he realized this is the temptation, illusory form in this particular case, and he composes the song to the Tassimos. And then, very strangely, that uh, the Tassimos, they, them, they also started begin to sing song to him. And they also quite significantly said that uh, the actual voices come from from the from the air without any form. Which manifested the sort of echo of uh, your own mind in this case, and uh, because of that kind of Tassimo represents a tremendous scope of uh, creating um, conflict as well as the inspiring quality. Therefore, the song of Tassimo is, uh, in other words, perhaps you might say it better than Melarepa's own songs. And she sings a very beautiful song of uh, almost instructing Melarepa going through the various. Uh, customary traditional images. By the way, this, this song, singing song to each other is quite well known in Tibet in the Melarepa's times and a time early on that uh, people have developed their own tunes to the song and they sing, they compose song to each other, which is another way of talking to each other which is highly developed in the particularly, if you read a book called Guess of Ling by Madame Devi Neal's translation, and there's certain descriptions of the war of Guess of Ling, who is the equivalent of King Arthur of Tibet. And this mythical king, and when he had raged war to the uh, barbarians, that all these Epic is started with the songs. Before they actually shoot each other, before they fight each other, they have started singing songs to each other. And using, I mean, it is regarded actually as um, not only just uh, immediately you meet a person and you just uh, do things directly like animal like thing, but you have allow, you allow patience and you will allow to demonstrate it and uh, show off, so to speak, your dignified quality or your intelligence qualities. They sing song to each other, which is done in the tradition in Tibet. In the past, they sing song to each other. A lot of the phrases have been automatically well-known thing like proverbs, and they put it in the form of a song, and they sing it to each other with their own tunes. And after every sing song, they welcome the person in prose or else they if it's a better field, they fight each other, which is quite a well-known practice in Tibet, particularly quite a, I think, characteristic of those periods in Tibet. People have done singing songs very much. They compose songs to each other. And uh, Milarepa's tradition also, since he was brought up in the very deep-rooted traditional family and area of Upper Tibet, is particularly regarded as a one of the very typical Tibetan setup, Tibetan in country. Because in Upper Tibet, there was no link with the other foreign countries, those days at all. Whereas in East Tibet, there's a certain amount of influence coming from China, and in Central Tibet, there's a certain amount of influence coming from India, whereas Upper Tibet is completely kept isolated, except in the early days, there was certain influence of Persian and the Middle East influence have occurred. <clears throat> so the singing song is quite a well-known thing. And uh, in this case, particularly, the Trasimo says that uh, if you have any doubt, you have to reconcile your own mind, and you have to 
overcome your, you have to dig the root of your own confusion. That's the last word of Charles Simo. And the Milarepa's answer said that you are true, you are completely true that I haven't heard such beautiful song as yours. It could be, it is much better than hundred, hundred scholars have could have worked on this song. Or a great enlightened person could work on this song. And your song is very beautiful indeed. And it really penetrated into my heart, your golden spear of your song had penetrated into my heart. And it cleared away my depressions and uh, ignorance. And you have caused the open the white lotus of wisdom in my heart. And you have lighted the light of torch in my heart. And you caused the uh, realization of waking state of mind. And uh, whether you have wakened me or not, it is, I have I've managed to discover that uh, when I gaze at this space in the sky, the blue sky, that uh, this suddenly inspired me of realization of shunyata, of dharmata. And when I have looked to the sun and the moon lighting, I have discovered the, the luminous quality of the mind. And there's no danger of uh, sloth for laziness. And when I focus my eye on the crest of mountains, on the horizon of mountains, this inspired me unchangeable aspect of the meditation indestructible aspect of meditation. So I realized that my experience meditation is neither going or nor coming. And when, I, when I focus my own stream, running stream, that I have, you have inspired me to develop the continuity of the waking state of mind. So there is no doubt of uh, interruption of uh, sudden thoughts. And when I focus my eye on the my eye on the colorful rainbow, I have realized the the union of uh, inspiration as well as shunyata. So I have I have uh, developed a confidence of uh, transcending of uh, falling to the extreme of nihilism and eternalism. And when I focus my eye, my eye on the, the moon reflecting in the water, I have discovered that non-grasping quality of self-illuminating. So I have not a doubt of uh, the returning of uh, grasping of thoughts. And when I focus my self in, the, in my own mind, I have discovered it is rather like butter lamp burning in the vase. There is no danger of uh, intrusion of ignorance or, or doubts. And when I heard from your word of truth, I, you, made to, you made me to discover the transcendental insight of one's own nature suddenly. <laughs> 